Hello friends! Since the start of 2021, we've seen a ton of new content. We've seen four major set releases, Kaldheim, Strixhaven, Modern Horizons 2, and Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. We've also seen the digital release of Magic the Gathering Arena on mobile. Kaldheim took us to a plane inspired by Norse and Viking mythology, a chance to boast and foretell and rock on. Strixhaven sent us back to school with colleges vying for your scholarship fund. Hey, go Silver Quill. <laughs> we expanded our horizons with Modern Horizons 2 with great draft moments and more powerful options for a beloved constructed format. Next, we got to get our D&D on with the adventures in the Forgotten Realms. What? Oh, where did I put my bag of holding? Oh, and MTG Arena came to mobile. <laughs> Yay! But while the Magic games we played in 2021 have been great, the where, the how, and the why of those games has been challenging. Which is why, before the giddy excitement of everything we want to share with you today, we want to say a heartfelt thank you. Thank you to our legions of local game stores whose tenacity, determination, and love of gaming mean they're right there when we need them the most. Thank you to the multiverse of talented content creators whose love of the game brightened our days and showed us how to gather virtually. Thank you for being a part of the gathering at a time when it has never been more important. Where do we stand? Together. 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 And together, we are the gathering. What's up, everybody? I'm your host, Jimmy Wong, and I'll be joined throughout the next hour by fantastic guests from across the multiverse. Magic Showcase 2021 goes beyond the playmat, bringing you first looks at tabletop and digital gaming for 2022. In today's show, well, we'll look at the rest of 2021 first. Tabletop, digital, in-store, in Estrad. Then it's on to next year for everything coming your way from bonus sets to secret layers, from comics to art books. Oh, also one word, un. Want to know the full set release roster for 2022? We got you. And something you'll really want to see at the end of the show. In short, whatever you love about the best game in the world, we've got new products, new partnerships, and new reveals that are going to blow your minds. This is Magic Tomorrow, today. All right, everybody, let's get right into it. Today, I've been joined by Vice President of R&D, Aaron Forsyth. Now, Aaron, I get to say something that I'm really excited to say. We've been waiting a long time for this, but in-store play is back. Woo! That's right. It's been a long 18 months. But when you're ready, when your store's ready, when your community's ready, we're going to make sure that you have the right events there to play in. Awesome. Now, Friday Night Magic is something that I have very much missed over these past couple of years. What are we going to be doing for that that's really exciting? Right, so FNM will be our flagship in-store play program, as it always has been. Awesome. They'll be offered at all the WPN locations, and it'll be in a variety of formats. So check in with your local community and your local store to see what they're running for any given week. That's a great way to get in touch with, with your community. And of course, when they're ready, right? Absolutely, when you're ready. Now, for me personally, my favorite event of all time is the pre-release. New players, new cards, new experiences. What are we going to be doing with that? Well, pre-releases are our biggest in-store events. Mm -hmm. You get to come in and play with new cards a week before they're officially released. And we're going to keep that going. So we're going to offer all the same sealed deck play that we had before, and we're going to add a bunch of stuff on top of that as well. Now, something in my heart tells me that multiplayer magic has something to do with that. Is there going to be anything in that world? For sure. We're going to be adding things to the pre-release that are for new players, for social players and for commander players. So check in with your local store and see what they're up to. And of course, these are all going to be in addition to what's already being offered. So we're just getting more of what we love. That's right. Sealed deck is my favorite way to play. And the pre-release is the place to do that. Awesome. Uh, and we'll be having that just like we always have. Now, of course, when you do end up going to your local game store, make sure you grab the companion app. This is something that's really exciting. Can you tell me a little bit more about this? It's just a great tool for the in-store tournament player. You can register for the events through it. You can track your life total. Oh, you cool. can see where you are in the standings. You can get notified when the next round begins. 
And then even when you're not playing in a store, you can run events from home using it. Uh -huh. You can browse all of the entire Magic Card Gallery. It does it all. Wow, that's super handy. And running your own events from home seems just like something I've wanted to do for a long time. Now, it's to me, very excitingly, you know, I think friendship in stores and just being able to like really interact with players is something that's so amazing. But for the competitive players out there, I hear that Christmas is coming a little early. That's right. So this December, we're bringing back a, a program we'd run before called the Store Championship. Oh, cool. Yeah, I've seen that name uh, emblazoned on playmats across my history in Magic. So what's going to be happening? Are, I'm guessing cool prizes. Cool prizes for sure. So we're running them in a, letting the stores choose which format they want to run them in. It can be standard, modern, pioneer, or limited. Uh, and then, there, yes, there are some awesome prizes. Uh, the winners will be getting foil worm coil engines. What? Yes. Yeah, and the top eight gets foil collected company. Wow, that's really uh, cool. And these are some next level promos. You'll have to check them out. Wow, and then anyone who shows up at all mm -hmm. will get a, a promo Arbor Elf just for showing up. Wow, that's fantastic. The promos sound awesome. Now, please tell me that there's something special planned for the store champions themselves, because that's the, that's the one you're going for if you're competitive. Right, so that worm coil engine, as well as the top eight collected companies, are going to be printed with the name of each individual store on the card. So wow. these promos are going to be unique to that store. So you get to rep your store with your promos whenever you put them in your decks forever if you make it to the top eight of that event. That's awesome. I'm sure local game store owners are going to be so excited to see that, their name on an official Magic card. That's amazing. And I hear you also some good news for Commander players. Yeah, so we're going to be starting an event called Commander Parties, hmm. which is going to be a very social event kind of based in storytelling. So, oh, interesting. Yeah, so uh, we're not, it's not really about winning. Okay. Uh, it's about kind of communal engagement, storytelling, and kind of a metagame where what you do in your game can affect other games. There'll be an ongoing story piece happening in the background. Whoa. It's a very, really new, cool experience that immerses you in, a, in the first one in the world of Innistrad. Oh, wow, that's amazing. And yeah. more excitingly, I love the fact that you're able to maybe interact with the other playgroups around more. So that's awesome. Winning doesn't matter, and you're you're really playing almost like a metagame outside of Commander. That's right, and anyone who shows up will get a, a participation promo. Oh, fantastic. Well, Aaron, it sounds like stores are going to be the place to be, of course, again, when it is safe for everyone. So thank Absolutely. you so much, Aaron. Really awesome news. Aaron Forsyth, everybody. Now, it's time to check in with my good buddy Joe Johnson. So, Joe, what's going on? Hey, thanks, Jimmy. What up? Uh, I'm here with Jess Lanzillo, Senior Creative Director of Wizards of the Coast. What's up, Jess? How you doing? Hey, Joe. It's really great to be here with you today. Yeah. All right, cool. We got so many cool things coming up. Where, where do we even start? Well, let's start on the plane so nice. We're going to go there twice. Hey, let's go. And when I say nice, I mean totally spooky. <laughs> so we're going to be going back to Innistrad for two sets. Uh, both Midnight Hunt and Crimson Vow. Ooh, Midnight Hunt. What's, what's that all about? It's about werewolves. Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely about werewolves. Really, we're kind of opening on Innistrad at the time of the Harvest Tide Festival. Essentially, what's happened is that the day-night balance has gotten all out of whack, and the werewolves are now trying to take over. Okay, like they do, like they do. Yeah, that's so. kind of their thing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, are there any, like special features in this about maybe it's like a special werewolf coming out in this one or you know we're going to be telling everyone a little bit more about this on uh, twitch.tv slash magic um with uh, some special guests including one very famous werewolf true bloods i'll see oh joe mang and yellow let's go okay <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be great and he's gonna be accompanied by our buddy jimmy as well oh nice that is fantastic i gotta get jimmy in there that's what's up all right, so Midnight Hunt is coming out, what, September 24th? And you when can we see that Crimson Vow happen? It's November 19th. Nice, nice. What's going on with that uh, Crimson Vow? So Crimson Vow is our vampire wedding set, right? Ooh, okay. Super over the top, opulent vampire wedding, as a vampire is wont to do. Um, Olivia Valdarin, who is the head of the Valdarin uh, family of vampires, has decided to really go for true power couple goals, oh. team up with a yet-to-be-announced groom-to-be, oh, okay. and uh, take over all of Innistrad. Nice, nice. Okay, cool. So, I mean, they got a little Jay-Z and Beyonce vibes going on in the vampire world. Um, man. And that's not all. So, oh. in 2022, coming to WPN stores is Innistrad Double Feature. Ooh, okay. So, we asked ourselves two things. Hey, we've got Crimson Vow and Midnight Hunt. Okay. 
Why don't we put them together for a draft experience? Oh, okay. And then we also ask ourselves, hey, we're really inspired by classic monster movies. Nice. Why don't we do really cool collectible versions of our cards that are inspired by classic monster movies? So we smush those together into a collect -a draft or a draft delectable experience. A delectable experience. Yes. To monsters, maybe. To monsters. <laughs> and perhaps to anyone who would like to go to their WPN store and crack some packs. Sounds amazing. So, so now does double feature, feature, feature cards from the new set? It features, features, cards, cards from both sets, Midnight Hunt and Crimson Vow. That is so cool. Okay, I mean, man, I'm just saying, it might be summer now, but with Innistrad just around the corner, the dark approaches quickly. And humans don't stand a chance. And I'm, I'm a human. Does that, does that put me at risk? J Jimmy, help me out, man. Thank you, Joe and Jess. Really exciting stuff. Now, Aaron, Innistrad is just one of the many exciting ways for us to experience this game that we love, but we can't forget about digital. Um, for me, in these past 18 months, it's been a total escape to be able to play on my phone and all that stuff. Can you tell us a little bit about what's coming for digital? Yeah, so you mentioned playing mobile, uh, Arena on mobile, and that has been a huge win for uh, bringing the game to many, many more players here in 2021. Yeah. And we know tons of different people play arena, whether it's tabletop players looking to practice, whether right. it's digital only players that want to have an evolving up-to-date experience, or whether it's mobile players looking for something bite-sized they can carry in their pocket. So we're gonna continue to offer a ton of experiences and add to it. So like I said, we'll be offering all the traditional standard and draft play mm -hmm. for the t that the tabletop players enjoy. We're trying out some new digital stuff like the mirror mirror rebalancing event that we had recently, mm -hmm. as well as Jumpstart Historic Horizons, which comes out in a couple days. Awesome. And we're gonna be looking to expand the tools we have at our disposal to add even more different experiences to meet players where they are. Yeah, so again, it's adding more to what's already there and not limiting what was anything in the past. That's, That's right. awesome. Now, when it comes to the sets and renewals and rotations, when are we gonna be able to expect that for our competitive players? Yeah, so every September, the magic year kind of resets for standard play. Uh, and we remove four sets from the environment to allow the next four sets to come in and shake things up. So this September, uh, we're going to be seeing Throne of Eldraine rotate out, Theros Beyond Death rotate out, Ikoria Lair of Behemoths, and Core Set 21, or M21, to make room for these upcoming Innistrad sets as well as everything else that's coming down the pipe. Uh, and so that makes it a great time to get into playing, uh, especially on Arena, because we have this cool thing that you can get if you sign up now or log in now called the Renewal Egg. Oh, nice. What's in it? Well, it's got all sorts of individual card rewards and even some Innistrad Midnight Hunt booster packs. That's really exciting. I'm, I'm super looking forward to that. I can't wait to open some of those packs. Now, are there any plans to open up and shake up which formats are available on Arena? Well, the big one that we're making changes to is, is Historic Brawl. Right. So that's one that fans clamored for. We've run queues in it in the past, but we're doing two big things with this next update. Mm -hmm. One, we're changing it to be 100 cards. Oh, okay. Uh, which is a number I'm sure is near yeah, here. <laughs> very much so. <laughs> as well as putting the queue up uh, in perpetuity. Uh, oh, so wow. that you can play it any time of day, any time of the week, for as long as we leave it up there. Fantastic. So there's no plans to take it down. Nope. I, we can just keep playing Historic Brawl in the 100 card format now. That's right. Wow. Okay. And is there anything you can share about the arena opens? Because that's something that I've been really, it's been having so much fun watching streamers playing, playing myself. Right. So those are our biggest uh, competitive events that we run for arena players, and we love them. Uh, and we're going to make some changes to the formats we're offering there, including the big one that I know players have been clamoring for, which is we're going to offer our first draft open here coming up soon. Really? Oh, wow. Right. Limited tournaments. Yes. That's right. So now you can draft uh, and end up winning some some real prize money that way. Oh, that's exciting. So, and you know, one thing that has been really near and dear to my heart, it's been a way I've, lot, I've gotten a lot of other players into the game is Jumpstart. So what can you tell us about Jumpstart? Right, so Jumpstart Historic Horizons comes out two days from now. Uh, it, Jumpstart's been just a tremendous success for us. It's been a great way to introduce new players to the game. Yeah. Super fast and casual. It kind of combines the best of limited and constructed. Uh, and this release will include a bunch of 
cards from the Modern Horizon sets, which are near and dear to my heart, bringing those to Arena for the first time, as well as a new thing with digital first cards that we've designed that can work only on Arena right. that have some really sweet new mechanics. Yeah, like in perpetuity, words that I'd never have seen before. Really right. exciting stuff. Wow, okay, so much to process. It's time for a very quick break, but not for you, because many more announcements are just moments away. And later on in the show, we're gonna reveal every single Magic set coming out in 2022. So we see you in 60. Score dazzling reprints of some of the most sought after Commander staples. This Commander collection is all about black, including eight cards with new legend-focused art and character homages. Available in foil and non-foil at your local game store, this includes a double-sided snake and zombie token. So grab your Commander collection black. Introducing Pioneer Challenger Decks 2021. Based on top-level competitive decks, the four decks in this collection get you into the fun and powerful Pioneer format. Whether you want Azoria Spirits in blue-white, or Zav Auras in white-black, a mono-red burn deck, or the black-green-blue Lotus Field combo, the Pioneer Battlefield is yours to command. You'll get everything you need, including a full main deck, sideboard, and deck box. So if you haven't already, become an MTG Pioneer October 15th, 2021. When coordinated assassination attempts on guild masters Rao Zarek, Vraska, and Kaya rock the city of Ravnica and leave Jace Bellerin's life hanging in the balance, a fuse is lit that threatens not only these three guilds, but the entire plane of Ravnica. Now, these three must form a tenuous alliance to uncover why the targets of the assassins have all been planeswalkers. That's the first story arc in the biggest MTG comic launch ever. And here to tell us more about it is principal brand designer, Daniel Ketchum. You know, when I first started working at Wizards, I actually partnered with IDW Comics to tell a story about Chandra in the aftermath of War of the Spark. It was directly spun from the events of the TCG story. Um, but our friends at Boom Studios are doing something completely different. Uh, writer Jed McKay and artist E. Guar are telling completely original stories that maintain what's core about the Planeswalkers, uh, but takes them on brand new adventures. You don't need to know anything about the card game. You can just start at issue one and go from there. Awesome. Well, every great comic needs great art and great story, but comics like magic are highly collectible, and this comic is no exception. Correct. So every issue actually has a number of variant covers attached to it, hidden Planeswalker variants, if you will, um, each one drawn by a different superstar comics artist. And when can we get our hands on the latest issue? Well, issue number five is on sale right now, Jimmy. Hey, got him, coach. All right. What's up, everybody? We're still here with Aaron Forsyth, and now we are joined in our circle of revelation by Jess Lanzillo and the delightful duelist, Becca Scott. Welcome, friends. Okay, folks, questions. Jess, Aaron, we're going to talk about the 2022 release roster in a little bit, but I want to ask you about some of these awesome bonus sets that, yeah. you know, they really help the magic excitement just go on and on all year round. Jess, what's coming up? Well, let's kick it off with Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate. So social play is the key to both Dungeons and Dragons and Commander, so we're bringing them together at last. Um, it's going to be a set taking place in the city of Baldur's Gate, uh, which is located in the Sword Coast. Very cool. Aaron, tell us about the mechanics for Baldur's Gate. Well, there are certainly a ton of new legends themed as D&D characters. Yeah. There's going to be new multiplayer keywords. And we have a really cool draft environment, which we had it in the first Commander Legends, but a lot of people didn't get to experience that because yep. of uh, the pandemic. But you get to pick two cards out of a 20 card booster, uh, pass, and then pick two more cards each time until you have a 60 card 
limited deck with the Commander. Wow, I got to draft Commander Legends a couple of times and it was a total blast, so I can't wait to do it again. Ah, oh, so fun. Okay, so what are we gonna find inside these Battle for Baldur's Gate packs? Booster fun, of course. Ah. So you may remember our rule book frames from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. We're now expanding that look beyond creatures. Uh, we are looking at doing some awesome borderless cards, and we uh, are running back the ultimate uh, Commander Legends collectible, which are the Foil Etch Legends. Oh, excellent. And when can we expect to get this set in our hands? This will be in the first half of 2022. Awesome. Okay. All right, well, I'm really excited for that, but also another thing I'm stoked for, Jess, Jumpstart comes out just in a couple of days here on Arena. When are we going to be able to expect to see that coming to tabletop? You betcha. We've got Jumpstart 2022 coming to tabletop. Wow. It's the easiest way to combine the best parts of limited and constructed play. You just get a couple of boosters, you shuffle up, and you play. Yeah. It's totally the best. Uh, you get 20 card boosters. This time around, we're doing them in 46 different themes. Wow. Do you want to hear a couple samples of the themes? Uh huh. Yeah. How about multi headed creatures? Yeah. How about Eldrazi? What? Well, I'll leave you hanging there. <laughs> Okay, so what do we find in these packs that we shuffle together? So in each pack, you're gonna get 20 cards. You're gonna get one new card to this set. Wow. You're going to get a booster fun card in an anime style. And then you're going to get some awesome reprints. Oh, amazing. Uh, okay, when do we get our hands on it? I'm ready. <laughs> It'll be coming out in the back half of 2022. Ooh, but that seems like kind of a long way away. Aaron, help me out. Is there anything you could tell us about that's coming a little sooner? Yep, Double Masters 2022 comes out next summer. Awesome. Ooh, okay, so remind us, what is Double Masters all about? Okay, so what's better than one rare per pack? Two, Two rares, rares per, per pack. pack. And what's better than one foil per pack? Two, Two foils, foils per, pack. per pack. All right, so now you get what it's all about. <laughs> so. Double Masters is a reprint set full of all sorts of awesome reprints, two rares per pack, two foils per pack, and a really sweet new multicolor draft environment. Yeah. What the? You guys hear that? Oh, Becca, hey, hey uh. Aaron, Jess, please stay seated. We've made first contact. Yeah, we'll check this out. Yes. Ah! Who are you? I'm Mark Rosewater, head designer for Magic the Gathering. Mm. Oh, hey, Mark, you can take your helmet off. The air is good to breathe in here. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing here, Mark? Well, I'm dressed in a silly costume, so we know what that means. Yes. It's time for another onset. Oh, All right, okay. finally. <laughs> so as people know, the onsets, like in Magic, there's a spectrum. You can go to very competitive Magic all the way to very fun and casual Magic. The onsets are all the way on the fun and casual side. It's about just doing fun things with your friends, having great experiences, and just laughing and enjoying the act of playing magic. Awesome. Um, so one of the things we always try to do with onsets is try to do something that magic does, but put our twist on it. Right. So for example, Unstable said, faction sets are a lot of fun, so let's do a faction onset. So this time I said, what I want to do is a top-down onset. I want to take a really resonant trope and then just make lots of cards influenced by that. And so what we said is, okay, here's my idea, guys. I want to do a retro science fiction space carnival slash amusement park slash circus. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, yeah, you're, you're good to go. <laughs> all right, all right, put all the things in one. This is definitely pushing the boundaries of magic. Um, Mark, aren't you worried about, you know, the space-time continuum breaking? Well, uh, if anything's gonna break magic, no. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that we always want to do in magic is, in the, with the unsets, is just go places we've never gone before. Do things we've never gone before. So right now, we are taking you to Myra the Magnificence Intergalactic Astratorium of Fun. Wow. So it is a space carnival that travels the galaxy with out of that, I mean, it's a science fiction, so it's rides that you couldn't even possibly imagine. And what we're gonna do is we're bringing all these fun tropes and bringing them to magic. So anything you enjoy about carnivals, about amusement parks, about circuses, it's all here in a really fun, exciting new set coming out in the second quarter of 2022. Awesome, and uh, as a big fan of lands myself, are we gonna be seeing cool new basic lands? Of course. Yes. Uh, uh, unglued, the very first onset, introduced full art lands, and they've been a tradition every single time. 
But this time we are making space basic land. Yay. So they are full <laughs> art, full bleed, basic lands, but set on on the uh, on the ground of planets and in space. So for the first time ever, you can have science fiction lands for magic. Wow. Yay. And in addition to that, we're also doing um, shock lands set in space as well. So those are awesome. You can also open those up in the product. Okay, Mark, when do players get to get their hands on this awesome new onset? It's coming out in the second quarter of 2022. So soon. Yeah. So this is what happens when the multiverse and the universe collide. To, to infinity, infinity and beyond. beyond. Bye, Mark. Oh, we'll see you later. Is it safe? He needs a chaperone, I think. Dumb Good is proud to share their vintage-inspired collection designed around the Black Lotus and the retro Magic the Gathering logo. There's a full range of products, including apparel, accessories, and home pieces. But this is a limited edition release, so head on over to dumbgood.com. There's a new Magic art book on the way, a visual history by Jay and Ellie. Or, to give it the full title, Magic the Gathering, Planes of the Multiverse, a visual history. So, what's the book all about, Daniel? Well, Planes of the Multiverse takes us on a tour of Magic's most beloved worlds. Uh, each entry tells the story of a different plane and the colorful and, uh, characters that inhabit it. Uh, one of my personal favorites, of course, is Arlen Kord, the planeswalker from Innistrad. Um, and we'll also get a deeper dive into some of the other worlds, such as Theros, Dominaria, and Amonkhet. And you don't have to wait on this one. It's available today. Welcome back, everybody, to Magic Showcase 2021. And I've been joined by Becca Scott, who has spent a lot of time tracking someone very special down. Yeah, Jimmy, you know how this works. I mean, sometimes we ring up a guest, we ask them to come on the show. That's it, easy, like Mark Rosewater, for example. Sometimes we got to talk to people's agents, but sometimes we have to go above and beyond. Sometimes universes beyond. Uh. To talk about this and much more, it's product architect Mark Hagen. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey, Mark, good. So good, Mark. So good to have you here. Thank you. Okay, Mark, the universes are yours. Tell us more. Yeah, so um, we previously announced two big partnerships we have coming, uh, Warhammer 40,000 and the Lord of the Rings. So today I'll tell you a little bit more about what we're doing there. Cool. Uh, and then also we have a couple other partnerships that we haven't mentioned yet that I'll give you guys a sneak preview of. Oh, we love Very sneak exciting. previews. Okay. Yeah. So let's start with Warhammer 40,000. Uh, so this is a property that so many of us were so excited about. This is kind of a lifelong dream of mine to work, um, to kind of bring that cool world over to Magic. Um, so we assembled a, a team of, of passionate fans from within the studio. They got to work and we're gonna do this one through Commander decks. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a release of four ready to go Commander decks um, that kind of bring the world and the characters of Warhammer 40,000 to life. Mm -hmm. Um, all of the cards have Warhammer 40,000 art, so you really do d dive right into the world uh, when you play with one of these decks. Um, and then also we have a few kind of secret layer bonuses that are going to kind of come along for the ride. Uh, we just couldn't skip the opportunity, so it's, uh, it's fun stuff. Let's take a look. Um, here are a couple pieces of art I can show you here. Uh, these are kind of iconic Warhammer 40,000 yeah. Space Marines, but done kind of uh, with a, just a dash of magic. And uh, these, this is card art that you will see in that product when it comes out in the back half of 2022. That is so phenomenal. And art is such an integral part of Warhammer 40,000. Yeah. It, it's so cool to see it represented in this way. Yeah, just flipping through these cards is such a treat. And I'm, I'm telling you, even the reprints, even the basic lands, like w once we were kind of able to just pull in their whole universe, these cards are so fun. Right. All right, yep. well, from 40,000 to just one, the one ring. <laughs> Exactly. So the Lord of the Rings is coming to Magic, um, as we've mentioned before. So, um, you know, it is such a big world. So many stories, so many characters, so many moments that we kind of got to play with in our sandbox. 
And the only way we could pull it off was to do a full set. So this is a full booster set. Gotcha. Yeah, we went all the way. We couldn't hold back. So um, the characters you would want, Gandalf and Gollum and Frodo, all those, uh, the moments that you remember uh, from those stories, all of that comes over. Um, this is going to be, you know, it's a big swing for us. So we, we built this full set. You, you can draft it. it they're going to be modern legal. So these cards will go into the modern format. Mm -hmm. And this is going to come out in 2023. So stay okay. tuned for that. All right. Wow. I mean, just bringing an iconic character from a universe like that into magic must be such a challenge. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of the fun, right? We, we have these characters with so much backstory and their own personality and their own history. And now we get to kind of... Um, put them on a magic card and we want to both be, be true to their, their spirit and bring a little bit of a magic twist to them. So we'll take a look at Gandalf. This is Gandalf, uh, friend of the Shire. And so you can see that magic take, a, you know, a very fun picture, but also, you know, this is the Gandalf that um, many of us have kind of been imagining as we've been part of this world for so long. It really captures the essence of the Shire. Now, is this set also, of course, coming to tabletop yep. anywhere else? Indeed. So yeah, this is a full tabletop release. It's also coming to Magic Online and Arena. Cool. Yeah, we couldn't uh, we couldn't resist. So this, you can play this you know wherever you love to play Magic. Um, and uh, we didn't just stop at the set. So along with the set, which you can draft or play, uh, we also have ready to go Commander decks. So there'll be four decks if you just want to dive right in. And again, some secret layers that are going to kind of get in on the fun while we have this opportunity. So a, a, a big wave, a, a really fun way to just enter the world of Lord of the Rings. Uh, you know, with your friends around the table. Yeah, I love it. I heard you say the secret word. Indeed, secret layer is, uh, it, it, secret layer is a very helpful way that we can kind of play around with some of these partnerships. So sometimes we're looking to do something a little quicker or lighter or, or experimental. Uh, and so I have two partnerships that I'll announce today. Ooh. The first one is Fortnite. Ooh, <laughs> That's right, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, so we, uh, you know, we're huge fans of them. They do so much interesting stuff over there. And so we um, are doing two drops uh, that are uh, the flavor and character and world and kind of vibe of Fortnite brought over to Magic Cards. We're going to do this one with reprints. So these are cards that you might already be playing in your deck. Um, but now you'll get to kind of, if, if you want to, you can upgrade them into the, the Fortnite version. And uh, we, we had a ton of fun with this one. I love how much color is in there. Yeah, it's, it's just a world, it's kind of a, a slice um, of creative that we don't get to see that often, and it was fun to just kind of pour it all the way in. Is this floss? That's exactly it. Oh that's boy. perfect. Okay, that's <laughs> my <laughs> signature <laughs> move right here. It's a sit-down floss. It's so cool. You're so much cooler for doing it back then. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. I know you really meant that genuinely, and I appreciate it. Okay, but you said there were two exciting collaborations. If Fortnite's the first, what's the second? Yeah, so uh, additionally, coming next year, we have a Street Fighter drop. Whoa! Right, so, um, you know, these are characters that, you know, I, I fell in love with, you know, in the arcade as a child, and they've been mm -hmm. playing with them. You know, they've just been part of my life and, and have <gasps> part of gaming for so long. Oh, my goodness. And now they're making the jump to magic. So, so cool. Yeah, so these are some iconic uh, Street Fighter characters. We built cards for them. These will be in a drop. Um, and... Uh, yeah, you, you see the art here. This is Chun Li. Yep. Um, which uh, you know, we we the team really sat down. They said, "How do we bring Chun Li to life on a card uh, mechanically?" Chun Li, kind of one of the all-time great kickers in uh, in gaming, True. famous True. for her flurries of kicks. Uh, and so uh, I can announce today, breaking news: this card has multi kicker. <laughs> <laughs> we have no <laughs> choice. Of right? How else could you do Chun Li? Is That's it okay? Hilarious. It's normal to cry when you see a magic card, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Wow, cool, cool, that cool, is cool, amazing. Cool. Yeah, Great flavor yeah, there. Yeah, I love it. Nice. I love it. Yeah. All that very exciting stuff is happening in the future. So tell us about right now and about the out of time super drop. Right. So we have a, a brand new super drop that's dropping right now. It's available um, as we speak. Um, and uh, I'll show you the cards. Super fun oh, stuff. Sweet. So yeah, it's kind of a time travel theme. Out of time is the name. Um, the first one is called Teferi's Time Trouble. So. Uh, Take a look at these. So these are three cool Planeswalker cards. But what we've done here is we've 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 um, presented them as if we had been making these cards in the 90s. Oh. So kind of old frames, the kind of old way we used to write rules to describe how to make these things work. So we had so much fun. The editing team had so much fun figuring out how to, how to kind of make these work. So that's the Fairy Time Trouble, super fun. Okay, how cool. many are there of these drops? There's five total drops. So Ooh. that's the first one. Okay. Uh, the second one is... Uh, uh, we're going back to a beloved place called Kamigawa. So this is called uh, Kamigawa right. Inc. Uh. And so these are five um, uh, classic Kamigawa characters, uh, cards that uh, have been fan favorites for a long time. And now we've done them here in this kind of cool Japanese ink painting style 
just a, a very different take on these cards. So super fun to slot into your commander decks nice. and kind of uh, revisit classic Kamigawa uh, back in time a little bit. Love that. Okay, we've got a drop based on a character, Teferi. We've yep. got a drop based on a plane, Kamigawa. Yep. What else? That's so the next two, yeah, you got it. The next two are artist series. So this is a place where we team up with an artist, uh, a magic artist that we love, and we just say, go nuts, do what you want to do, help us pick the cards, you decide what to draw on them, and, and, and then we just wait for the great <laughs> stuff to come back in. So the first one is uh, Johannes Voss. Mm -hmm. So this is this beautiful uh, kind of four-piece story. These two characters that kind of, um, you can kind of uh, tell the tale as they kind of go on an adventure. Gorgeous, kind of colorful, harmonious, relaxing pictures. Mm -hmm. So I love this one so much. Very cool. Okay. Gorgeous. And the second artist? The second one is Thomas Baxa. This one is uh, not quite as relaxing. It's pure <laughs> nightmare fuel. This oh, is yeah. wild stuff. We couldn't believe this stuff when it came in. Um, and so, yeah, Thomas Baxter just went wild on these four crazy cards. And uh, for fans of his out there, we really feel like he, he really brought his A-game. Wow. Okay, now if my math is correct, that is all five of the new drops coming our way. Close. Oh. Uh, that's four. Um, the last one is called Math is for Blockers. Oh. Ah. Yeah, so we, we found an artist out there who does very cool, very fun, kind of math, uh, geometric-inspired art, um, starting from kind of basic shapes and then building out these, these beautiful illustrations. So cool. we, we, we knew we had to work with them. And so we put together this kind of lightly math-themed pack called Math is for Blockers. If you <laughs> see the, the, we did a fun gag with the power toughnesses of these characters, so um, a lot of fun stuff. And uh, I actually think we have an animation, and we'll show you kind of a little bit of, of the process here. So you can see, right, it kind of starts oh, with kind I of see. shapes oh, and then there it is, yeah, the triangle. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So that's Math is for Blockers. So yeah, super fun stuff. Well, my math is just fine, and I can correctly identify that the number of these that I want is uh, all of them. Ah. I want all of them. <laughs> How do I get them? Yeah, so they're up right now. As I said, you can go to secretlair.wizards.com. You can buy them individually. We have bundles. You can get them all in one bundle or just the foils or the non-foils. So, um, yeah, hopefully if, if any of these speak to anyone out there, uh, uh, swing by the website and um, pick one up. Yeah, Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Mark, for coming on the yeah. show. And next time, we'll know right where to find you. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. All right, everyone. When we come back, it is time for the full set release roster for 2022. You don't want to miss it. Stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome, friends. It's time to talk Pinfinity. Join the official Magic the Gathering pin subscription by Pinfinity with three beautifully crafted collectible pins powered with augmented reality content. Your first three pins feature Den of the Bugbear, the legendary Dritz Doerden, and the Magic Mana symbols. With three epic pins, two chances to win booster boxes, plus other member perks, join today at pins.ar slash join MTG. Jimmy, this sounds so cool. What, what can members expect? Lots of fun. They'll receive first access to limited edition pin drops, the chance to win booster boxes, MTG Arena challenges with the Pinfinity team, and a bunch more. Ooh, the AR content seems very cool. So when you scan the pins, you can see artwork, video, music, selfies, and downloadable content with new features coming in the fall. So join today at pins.ar slash join MTG. Hey everybody, welcome back to you and to Joe Johnson and to Jess Lanzillo and Aaron Forsyth from Wizards of the Coast. Okay, it's the big one. It's time to reveal the roster of sets for 2022. How does next year begin? Well, the first set of 2022 is Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Woo. Nice. This is set 2,000 years after the first Kamigawa blog. It's a place where tradition meets modernity. Think neon ninjas and cyberpunk samurai. Very cool. Um, it's got a totally cool futuristic aesthetic where everyone looks amazing. Nice. Um, this is, a, of course, like all magic sets, it has a unique magic twist. This isn't just your typical sci-fi dystopia. It's a really cool place where I think I'd want to live, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is our new planeswalker, Kaito. He's Ooh. a cool cyber ninja. We love him. <laughs> There's also another mysterious planeswalker making an appearance in this set. Uh, the Emperor of Kamigawa is someone that you may have seen before. Oh, mysteries. Mm. Mm, interesting. Yeah, so this set bridges the history of the original Kamigawa with the future. So this, we take a lot of game design elements from the first time we were in Kamigawa years ago and mesh them with some cool sci-fi stuff, cool. Uh, a lot of light and color, 
and game mechanics that reflect kind of the new modern age that Kamigawa is moving into. Mm, uh, and Aaron, you, you've been at Wizards since, you know, long before the yeah, long original time. Kamigawa. <laughs> <laughs> Kamigawa is one of those planes that players remember fondly and look, you know, wanted us to revisit. So we took the good parts, uh, a lot of the creative elements, uh, and redid just about everything else, some mm -hmm. all, all new gameplay mechanics. Um, and just tried to give you the, the freshest take we could on, on something that people really love. Nice. Wow. Super exciting. Right. And magic doesn't exist in a vacuum, so it was really important for us to go back to Kamigawa and do it right. Mm -hmm. So, Jimmy, you've spoken very powerfully about cultural representation. Right. So not only do we have an amazing internal team, but we worked with a bunch of cultural developers and our regional offices to make sure that we're delivering on the full experience for our fans. Yeah, and I know I speak for a lot of people as well, but it certainly is incredibly appreciated, especially for a game that's as universal and worldwide as Magic is. Well, I cannot wait to see what's happened to Kamigawa 2,000 years after we first visited it, but where are we going to travel to after that? So this is another type of world that we've never really done before. We're going to a, a, a kind of a modern urban fantasy setting. Uh, this is our take on a gangster movie. Whoa. We're really excited to share with you today Streets of New Capenna. This is a glamour setting full of crime. Mm, very interesting. Yeah, so this is definitely something new for us. Uh, but we're using some familiar elements gameplay wise. Five three color crime families Ooh. yeah that you get to each player we get to pick the one that they like the best uh, and represent them and you'll learn that crime does pay <laughs> wait did, did, did i hear that right magic is getting crime families like that's right what? you know yeah so mechanically each one uh has its own keyword mm -hmm. and its own gameplay style and as, as jess will attest to its own really unique look and feel and this is fantasy, right? So you've seen the gangster movies before, but these families won't necessarily all be made up humans. Oh, interesting. Let's so see, we got what, squirrels? Squirrels. Squirrels. Uh, <laughs> zombies. <laughs> homunculi. Yeah. Oh, 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 Lorgoys. Okay. Ah. Loxidens. Is there a worm crime worm. family? I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> You shall see more one day. Uh, <laughs> Very exciting. New Capenna is a city originally built by angels. But the times have changed. Demon crime families now oh, wow. rule the plane and are battling for supremacy. As they do. Uh, players will be able to join those families on their own personal quest for domination. Man, I mean, this, this genre has such like a unique aesthetic. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, imagine for art to really pop in this set. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah. Yeah, the fashion and the architecture that you will see in New Capenna is something that you've never seen in Magic before. It's really, really breathtaking. Yeah, and fans of lore will love finding out all the stories and how they tied together with this new plane. Uh, in fact, this plane has special meaning to Elspeth, one of our longtime planeswalkers. Well, uh, Elspeth? Okay, <laughs> know, very right? exciting. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm really excited to hear more about that. Okay, two down, two more to go. What is next in 2022 for the multiverse? We're going home, everyone. Uh oh. <laughs> there is, in fact, no place like home. So we're going to return to where it all began for another classic adventure. We're going to kick off our 30th anniversary with a return to Dominaria, and the set is called Dominaria United. Ooh, Dominaria United. United. <laughs> Let's go. Epic. Yeah, so no place to go back to than where it all began. Mm -hmm. uh, 30th anniversary, huge milestone for magic. Tons of sets in the past have taken place on Dominaria, all the way back to the original you know, Alpha and Beta sets, Invasion, Urza Saga, just all of some of the most beloved sets ever made, including you know, Dominaria, the set we came out with a few years ago. Right. So it made sense to come back. People liked that set so much. It was just a perfect place to return to for this momentous time in Magic's history. Yeah, I mean, Magic has been growing so much, and it gets new players and fans all the time. So I, I think a lot of them are going to experience Dominaria for the very first time on this original plane. Why is Dominaria so special to Magic's history? I mean, it's the nexus of the multiverse. Many of our best stories belong there. So you think about, uh, you know, one of my first cards, Shiv and Dragon, uh, you know, from Shiv, uh, Talaria, Urborg. We've got the Mana Rig, the Weatherlight, uh, you know, all sorts of classic characters, Gerard, Sisse, um, Hannah. Iconic heroes go hand in hand right. with all of these amazing settings and set pieces, along with some historic villains, and you'll see more of them too. There's history in every corner of Dominaria, and it felt right to return there as Magic turns 30. 
Right. It's nice. nice. Well, now, you mentioned like the Weatherlight saga. I just, you know, this place just isn't special because of where it is, but like it's almost also very much where the people live, you know, where they're from. Indeed. Thank you for the <laughs> segue. <laughs> segue yes. uh, that's why our final set of 2022 takes us back in time to the pivotal tale of two siblings who shaped the multiverse. Oh, me and Joe. <laughs> Man. <laughs> no. <You guys. laughs> I think you guys might be a little bit nicer than these fellas, uh, but we are proud to announce The Brothers War. Oh, nice. All right, so this is a set that's almost 30 years in the making and thousands of years in the making. So, all right. So who are these two brothers? Well, they're two of the most famous uh, names in all of magic. You've seen them on many of your cards, uh, Urza and Mishra. They're talented, misguided artificers, and they kind of decide to fight with each other and not play so nice. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, their feud m manages to engulf Dominaria in an all-out war, and uh, they may, in fact, just destroy that entire plane. Right, so this is a story that was hinted at a long time ago in one of the very first magic sets we ever made, Antiquities. Mm -hmm. And that set was kind of an archaeological dig site where this story was, was unearthed. Right. But we wanted to move the camera back and show it as it happened. So first person view of what the Brothers War was like, what were Urza and Mishra like when they were waging war across all of Dominaria. Wow, nice. that's so exciting. Yeah, nice. these events are like truly cataclysmic. They uh, really shape what we see the Dominaria of today looking like. But we, when we came back here, we wanted to make sure that we were not just focusing on the brothers, but we were giving other voices, uh, cultures of Dominaria that maybe haven't been shown off a whole bunch of the spotlight. So at the core, the events don't change, but we're kind of broadening the aperture of how we're looking at this time period for Dominaria and seeing it through a new lens. Okay, but it's cool if we know, if we're just like brand new to this famous story. Oh yeah. Absolutely. First and foremost, this is a set full of like epic war and war machines, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Giant artifacts, artifact creatures. All right. Just really so. fun cards to play with, very evocative. Yeah, and at the end of the day, you learn all about the brothers and the brothers war and everything that kind of shaped magic and uh, everything that has come since. Wow. Uh, so that all comes out in the uh, last half of uh, 2022. Nice. We got Kamigawa, Neon Dynasty, Streets of New Capenna, Dominaria United, and the Brothers War. I mean, what a roster for 2022. Yeah, what a roster we've had on set. I, I mean, Aaron, Jess, it's been so great having you on the show today. Thank you so much. Thanks. It's been awesome. Yeah, this has been amazing. We're so excited for all of these sets. We're working with Ultra Pro, the leading manufacturer and supplier of gaming collectibles accessories, with some exciting products to come, starting with the Mochi Kami Dice Bag. Mochi Kami are a new addition to the multiverse found in Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. These adorable plush friends are designed to store your treasures and travel with you as you game by clipping onto your bag with the included carabiner hook. They're made with extra squish for maximum huggability. We've also got the Stitched Edge playmat, which embodies the spirit of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Take a look into the neon future where brilliant colors and lore collide to offer a hint at what this set has in store for players. These products will launch alongside an entire line of accessories for Kamigawa Neon Dynasty pre-release weekends. Be sure to check it out. All right, everyone, we hope you've had a fantastic time watching Magic Showcase 2021. And we also hope that you're excited about the 2022 that's going to unfold right across the multiverse. On Magic Online. On Magic Arena. On the page. In the boosters. At the kitchen table. And spell table. At your local game stores. And on, on Netflix. Netflix. Okay, Daniel, today is the day that we get our very first glimpse at the Magic Animated Series on Netflix. I cannot believe this day is finally here. I'm very excited. Uh, so where to start? Uh, first of all, 
uh, this new Magic the Gathering animated series. Uh, it is completely new, a completely fresh jumping on point, so you can bring your friends, bring your family who have never touched a Magic card in their lives, and they will be able to enjoy the ride from episode one. Fantastic. Is there anything you can tell us about the series, how it's progressing, a timeline maybe for the fans? Uh, well, I can tell you a lot of things, but let's see here. <laughs> uh, it's uh, coming along great. Um, it's crazy how far in we are, yet uh, how far there is still is to go. Right. Um, let's see here. All the scripts are written and locked in. Um, all of the voice talent has been cast, and I think the full first season's even been audio recorded. Wow. So we're pretty deep in. Okay. Um, Gideon's actually the heart of the story. He'll play a really, really big role in driving the action. Um, this is character-first entertainment, so this is not like, you know, like, oh, we have to destroy 20 life gems in order to win the day. Right. This kind of features on the characters, their relationships, and their trials. Um, and we'll actually get to start seeing that in a prequel novel that we're working on with our partners at Penguin Random House. Oh, wow. This is like the third novel that Gideon's been featured oh, yeah, in, right? definitely. Oh, my goodness. Right. You are up on your magic novels. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what's the story then? So it, uh, it precedes the Netflix show, okay. um, and it's, it's going to tell the story of Gideon Jura and Jace Balaran. Um, basically, how they met. Uh, we'll get to see them road trip through the multiverse, um, right some wrongs, and then eventually we'll also see sort of where their relationship goes sour. I see. So we, okay. got, we got Gideon, we got Jay. So any more familiar faces? I don't think I'm allowed to tell you. You might have to watch the series for that. Okay, well, then we need to know when are we going to be able to see this for the first time? Uh, well, the novel is going to come out alongside the first season of Magic the Gathering, the animated series. Okay, all right. Well, if Gideon is a big part of this novel, then I'm assuming he's just going to be a huge part of the series as well, like you said. Absolutely. We will see quite a bit of him, which is super exciting because, you know, when I started um, at Wizards about three and a half years ago, um, Gideon was one of the first characters that I got to dig into right. and figure out, you know, um, not just, you know, uh, what does this guy look like, you know, as we move from, um, you know, trading card paintings but into animation, but like, how does he move? How does he speak? How, what does it look like when he casts spells, um, when he uses his, his you know, hieromantic powers? Um, what does a Searle look like in motion? I think, you know, there was an afternoon actually where a couple of us from the franchise team locked ourselves in a conference room and just watched every YouTube video we could find on Searles because it's like, who knows what a Searle moves like? <laughs> right, so we got right, to kind of right. figure out what is a Searle, how does it move, and how do you fantasy that up in a really cool way for this Netflix show? All right, well, let's meet the actor bringing Gideon to life. Greetings, Magic fans. I'm Brandon Routh, and I play Gideon in the upcoming Magic the Gathering animated series coming to Netflix in 2022. For those of you that don't know, Gideon is known for being the strong guy who always stands up for what's right, just, and isn't afraid to fight. Now I understand why they hired me for this. Makes sense. But seriously, uh, I am really excited about this show and really proud and honored to be a part of it. I'm a huge Magic fan. I've been playing since I was 16. I've played many drafts over the years um, and have too many cards, <laughs> more than I should, and um, also got to do a voice in uh, Magic uh, MTG Arena uh, as a different character. So um, I love this world, and I'm very excited to be a part of this animated series. I uh, hope you all will enjoy it in 2022. Thanks, Magic fans, and... Uh, I'll see you around the multiverse. Wow, a message from Gideon himself. <laughs> awesome. So when can we expect to see this on our screens? Uh, so the show will be available on Netflix in the back half of 2022. Okay, all right, okay. And I'm sure you'll keep us posted on all the details and whatnot. For sure. All right, all right. <laughs> awesome. Well, this has been so much fun. And, and thank you to Joe as well for joining me here on the couch. Oh, you know, I got you, man. Come on And now. big shout out. It was so crazy cool to hear about the Magic Animated Series. So thank you, Danny, for all that info. Thank you for having me. What a show it has been, from the return of in-store play to Jumpstart 2022, Unfinity to Universes Beyond, and from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty to The Brothers War. Thanks to the fine folks at Wizards of the Coast, and to you, fans of the best game in the world. They make the magic, you make the gathering. Together, Magic in 2022 is going to be amazing. So until next time, I'm your host, Jimmy Wong. See ya.